All right, what's up, what's up, what's up? This is What's the Remedy Podcast. It's your boy, Dr. J. Day one. All right, yeah, this is our weekly conversation over mental health, toxic masculinity, social issues, just all of that stuff that kind of, that we don't really have enough time to talk about on a regular basis. So, welcome, everybody. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, Ashley Ray's on vacation, living her best life in Mexico. Yeah, she, she's out, you know. She got, this is our second trip in like two months, so she's just living it up. Yeah, pretty much. She's living her best life, getting out of there. So, uh, big big ups to her. Hopefully, she's having fun. Yeah, I'm sure she's having a blast. I wish I could get out in paradise. Like yeah, that. I wish everybody else was able, but yeah. you know. Yeah, going out in the Miami and then uh, Mexico and all that kind of shit. I wish I had that kind of time and money. Hey, yeah. hey so some people just got it like that. I say everybody ain't able. Yeah, pretty much. So, everybody is not able. So, big up to her. Hopefully, she, like I say, having a good time out there. Yeah, shout out to Ashley. So, it's just me and me and day one here today. So, how was your weekend, man? And same old shit, different day, you know what I'm saying? You're dealing with people trying to take your spirit down. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, trying to stay up. I yeah, you're trying to stay up in this, like, in these mean streets, whatever. Like, say, you you dealing with people talking down to you because your color. Other people talk down to you because your age. Because they feel like they know a little bit more. Yeah. And stuff like that. So, you know what I'm saying? Battling those kind of different parallels throughout the week. So, yeah. It's, it's tough out here, man. It's tough being a black man in America. Oh, pretty much. It's tough being a black man in America, man. Uh, shit. My weekend was pretty cool. I just kind of chill. I've been kind of chilling for many of the weekends lately, though, because I'm trying to save money. Oh yeah. I'm trying. I'm trying to be a broke out here in these streets. Yeah, pretty so, much. Every time I go out, I'm like, damn, should I should I spend any money? Like I went to um, this wasn't a weekend. This was like on Tuesday, but uh, I went to the this. It was a happy hour that was put on. It was a HBCU happy hour. Oh okay. But. I guess it was Howard's alumni putting it on or whatever. So it was like everybody from different HBCUs, but just a bunch of Howard people too. And so they had like a little happy hour at this place called Culture. I feel like I had heard of Culture before. Apparently it's owned by the dude that owns Breakfast Club. Okay. And so they had a nice little happy hour. They had like $6 drinks and they get a nice drink. Like yeah. the ones where they, where they burn the banana peel and rub it on the glass. Okay. Like, no, like, they, they get at that uh, pint-sized plastic cup. Yeah, no, nah, they say like sweet. No, nah, they give you the, the real deal, the glasses. Yeah. The real glasses out there. And she look fancy. Oh, but yeah, no, I spent out there. It was, it was pretty nice. So they were only $6. So I mean, I, I don't even shout out the culture anyway. But yeah, it's a nice little spot right there. And they end up going to the Astros game. They had dollar hot dogs. So mm-hmm. I'm like balling on a budget out here. Happy hey, hours man. and dollar dogs. Hey, man, that's how you, that's how you supposed to do it. You know what I'm saying? Live your best life out here. Yeah. Living my best life right here in Houston. Yeah. Since I can't get out and do all the Yeah, I'm not saying might you not be on Mexico eating a uh, dollar dog with them, but yeah, you yeah, eating a dollar dog and join yourself. Yeah, I'm not I'm not over here eating like ceviche in Mexico. Yeah, you know, know what, what I'm saying? <laughs> saying that they're drinking that was a different sangria that everybody talking about. Sangria, uh, yeah. uh Capriccio. You yeah, know you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you gotta do your best with what you got, man. Pretty so much. but yeah, so that's all I did pretty much. And this this wedding I went to on I guess it was Saturday. It was pretty nice too. I, I've been going to, I think this is like, damn, I've been to probably almost 20 weddings in my life and it's crazy. Mm-hmm. And it's like the more weddings you go to, it's like it, you learn different things, like different weddings are all, like weddings are all over the place, but you know, there's some things that are kind of similar about all of them. And you know, whenever that time comes for me, like I feel like I have enough insight for, I can be like a damn wedding planner by now, man. Like I, I just be, looking around seeing decorations seeing how people set stuff up mm-hmm. like i had a uh one of my lbs had a wedding and he had like a brunch before the wedding started and i thought that was like some player shit. like that was that was it yeah yeah everybody kind of fed beforehand and everything yeah. else and, and like what he did was he didn't tell anybody about the brunch he just told everybody the wedding started at 11. so people you know niggas they gonna be late. Yeah. So, <laughs> so if I kind of, so you really didn't have to put out as much as you would to like my days of brunch. And 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 because like if people show up late, like you know people should have showing up late and walking in during the ceremony, or they can't walk in because the ceremony's going on. Well, since he said it was at eleven, people showed up. You know, people rolling in eleven fifteen, eleven thirty. The wedding still hadn't started yet. Yeah. So then, like, but by the time everybody had gotten there, and maybe some people got brunch, some people didn't, whatever. By the time they rolled around like eleven forty five, it's like, okay, everybody let's go to the wedding. And then mm-hmm. like that way everybody's there on time, even if they ain't on time. Yeah. Now, that makes it makes sense with because like I said, I would do something like that and have probably some mimosas, buy most mimosas for yeah, everybody and yeah. shit. Everybody feeling good and happy. 
that's that's what I'm thinking. Mimosas, like I don't, I don't, I'm on the fence about the food because I think food is expensive. I don't know shit about it, but yeah. I've been to a lot of them, and uh, from what I've gained from them is that food is expensive, man. I seen people take some major losses on food at weddings. So oh yeah, because like, people, because people don't show up. Well, yes. somebody like and you lose all that money. Maybe, and they and they charge you by the plate. And yeah, so, like you got. You got 15 people that didn't show up at like $25 a plate. You losing a lot of money. You know what I'm saying? So I don't, I don't, I don't know if I ever, I don't know how I'll navigate that when my, when that day comes for myself. But it's, it's interesting going to all these weddings and seeing how everything works. So it was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but for the listeners, you know, we we haven't had the episode since like Monday anyway. So we almost didn't record this week, but we were like, no, we gotta get an episode out. Pretty much. Yeah. So. Uh, for this week, it's gonna be it maybe short, maybe long. I don't really know. We'll see how it goes. But uh, we're gonna jump right into the main segment. Uh, the main segment, our check yourself segment, because well, we were gonna record this earlier in the week, and so Father's Day was this past Sunday, and we were really gonna try to you know just focus on Father's Day since we were gonna record around then. But we still gonna keep it on that that subject matter because I think it's real important that people kind of address some things like. So I'm gonna ask you, Wash. Like, how do you feel about daddy issues? How, how have you heard the term daddy issues come up before? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I think uh, it's usually subjected to just females. Right. Think about their daddy issues about how they they want a man, what the case may be. But it does affect males too. Men have daddy issues as well. Because yeah. in in the men's realm, our daddy issues is a lot of times we look for approval. Yeah. Um, so we look for approval of trying to be like our fathers or we look to try not to be what our fathers represented to us in a negative light like sure. we want to be different what the case would be so it's that constant struggle to find yourself as a trying to be a man in this world and looking at the example or lack thereof that you had right yeah and then for most females whatever they daddy issues they kind of look at it where um you have a lot of women seek the same the love and the comfort and nurturing that they will receive from their fathers from the person that they're talking to now in life. Yeah. And sometimes because daddy wasn't there or whatever, they seek those kind of they seek that approval, they seek that warmth, whatever. Mm-hmm. And sometimes get themselves in situations with niggas that present themselves to be that loving, caring person, but yeah. really just kind of using that against them. Yeah. And I and I think that um I guess my, my question to you is, do you think that somebody can do something about that or, or they can uh, fulfill that, that daddy role? Like, is there a way to avoid, like, women or men searching for that as they get older? Is there a way that we can avoid that? I mean, besides having a father, <coughs> a father in-house or whatever. Like, what, what other things do you think people can do to avoid that feeling? Well, I think there's something naturally in me. It like in embedded inside you from like from youth that it's kind of hard to be in your adult life and looking at the relationships that you be like okay I'm not gonna look for this kind of thing yeah. but how can you tell yourself I'm not gonna look for that when you've been looking for that your whole life yeah. and I think that's a, that's a big issue that a lot of people go through is trying to like okay I, but I think the first step about it is understanding what your issues is or what you mm-hmm. want and what you seek because you should seek the things you want in your father you should seek in your partner yeah yeah. Whatever. So, so you know what I'm saying? Cause you want your father to be a protector. You want your father to be caring. You want your father to be, you know what I'm saying? Just fucking there for you. You know what I'm saying? Be fucking around. So yeah, to want those same qualities in the man that you talk to for his women. You know what I'm saying? You should want those type of things. And I don't think the man that you talk to should be feel like that's an issue. But it becomes an issue when you want somebody to play too many roles yeah. when they're only supposed to play one. I was going to say, like, one of the things that I noticed <clears throat> just with working with people that have that issues or, you know, women with that issues, males with that issues, even as far as, like, children that are dealing with and experiencing it, is that, like, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to move past that issue. Yeah. Like, it, it's not, it's not something that you can be like, well, I mean, yeah, this was messed up in my past, but, you know, I got over it. Mm-hmm. It's not just something that you can get over. Like, it's something that takes a lot of work, and it's hard to, like, convince people how much work it really takes to like not react to those issues so like like you said women that uh, are seeking out like partners that fulfill a role of what they think their daddy should have been or whatever or men that are that are uh, 
trying to act out and act in a way like if they if they didn't have a father around but they think a masculine figure is supposed to do this is what a man's supposed to do and yeah. like you know your only basis for that is if you don't have a male figure in your life your only basis for that is tv you yeah know what i'm saying so i'm watching tv and i'm like oh okay these niggas do this on tv so i'm gonna be just like them because that's what a man is yeah and so i think that's where like I feel like, I, and I'm not going to tell people that, you know, because I hate when people have a conversation with women, like, oh, you need a man in your life. Like, you, you, your child needs a father or whatever. I don't know if they necessarily need a father, but they do need somebody that gives away those principles or ideals of what a man is supposed to act like, towards a woman at least, yeah. towards, you know, society. Yeah, but like, like you're saying, we don't have the role models in our households. We usually look for entertainment, TV, stuff like that. Like I said, when he's coming up, whatever, um, you had the Uncle Phil's and the Carl Winslow's and, you know what I'm saying, and even, even Pill Cosby. Yeah. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Cliff Huxley yeah, was a great man. Yeah, yeah. Cliff Huxley was a great man. Bill Cosby is an asshole. But, Bill Cosby is a piece of shit, but yeah. Cliff Huxley was a great It was the truth, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so you, you like I said, we looked at fathers like that, but you look at TV now, there's no real father figures like that. Yeah. That we can really relate to. And they, I mean, they they've tried to like bring it to where you have some father figures like that, but even like not even just black father figures. Like you know, you had um, I don't know what the white shows back then. You had Step by Step, and you had uh, Full House, Full House, House you know? where like that shit. Full House had three men in the yeah. house. You know what I'm saying? So like, it was it was a lot more. I guess because it was a lot more sitcoms back then, and since sitcoms have kind of played themselves out a little bit, and they're trying to make a comeback now. That's kind of where that father figure thing got lost. But at the same time, I guess I have to be understanding of people that didn't have that type of a nuclear family. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I, I know that they, I mean, a lot of, most of them grow up to be well-balanced individuals and everything. And so they need more representation of, you know, what what is it like to not grow up with a father, but still come out, you know, yeah. as a great individual. Well, like I'm saying, like, I'm like, we, we talking about looking at the Cosby show and, you know, saying Fresh Prince and stuff like that, like yeah. his role model. But then, like I said, you look at TV now, you got kids and stuff watching Love and Hip Hop, and half the dudes on there got multiple baby mamas, and you know what I'm saying? Trash. Trash, got, got trash. multiple kids, you know what I'm saying? Kids from, for different people and stuff, so, and a lot of them got their own personal daddy issues. Right. And stuff, so you was kind of like, but that's what we look at as kids, trying to like, okay, well, that's how we're supposed to be living our lives. And then, know? like, okay, so even with that, like, with the, um, with the guys on like love and hip hop and things like that, like the the negative aspects of just I guess because we just talking about black men, the negative aspect, the negative portrayal yeah. of black men gives you the idea that like this is how all black men are. Because like if I have a negative experience with a man, mm -hmm. like like let's say if, it was a, if I was a woman and I have a negative experience with a man, and then I look on TV and there's men on TV acting exactly like he act then I'm gonna be like, well, that's just how all men are. Whereas, like, if you had positive figures yeah. up there, then, like, you could be like, okay, well, this man in my life did some terrible things, but there could be men out there like, you know what I'm saying, Uncle Phil. There could be men out there like, uh, what else we say? I'm trying to spoil <laughs> Cliff Hudson. Who is it? Phil Hudson, baby. <laughs> no, no like, but no, but even, but even, like, just to go, like I said, we're going back in the day with shit, but even to go to looking at, uh, Fucking Will Smith, mm -hmm. the like Instagram pages and all stuff. Like he does a lot of stuff with his kids, his wife, whatever. Yeah. Living their best life, whatever. And people are like, hey, he's a real role model. He's being really positive and stuff. Yeah, we don't have that. That's that's one that you can shoot to. Right. And, but you got, for example, we talk about Will Smith. Like they was doing like little challenges. They was in Budapest. I just seen the other day. Yeah, I seen that. You know, what I'm saying dancing, having a good time, yeah. family bun and real positive shit. You know, the other end of the spectrum, we got future flying holes out talking about, yeah, I'm going to try to ditch my son so I can come fuck. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So, it, it, it is, and, but, and the other issue is that, like, right now in society, and, and this is, I don't know, it, it's kind of a mixture of a problem with the way that, you know, pop culture is, and it's a problem with, like, the way that we react to pop culture. Because, like, we, we, we tend to focus on the negative aspect of everything. So, like, when we talk about men, we talk about future, we talk about all that kind of stuff. Like, we focus on how uh, Future leaving his kids and trying to go over these Instagram holes, blah, blah, blah. But, like, in that same, at that same time, you have other people like Will Smith. I mean, because Will Smith is the example we use, but 
there are other men in entertainment that take care of their kids, that do right by their kids, that do all this good shit. But like we have, like our our society focuses on whatever the negative way is. Yeah. So like since Future is the one that's the most negative at the moment, that's going to get the most most attention. And then because it gets the most attention, it, we use that as like our as our basis for being like, oh well, that's how men are. Yeah. You know, niggas cheat. Niggas do this, so and then this nigga, he he got all this money and stuff, and he doing it too, and it, it's kind of like the whole um, Jay Z and Beyonce thing. I was actually gonna get into this when we talked about yeah, the album. Yeah, that shit. I, I, whatever. If my my thing about this whole Jay Z and Beyonce thing, like my my question for this, but like Beyonce fans, and I, I hate to address Beyonce fans because they're crazy sometimes. Yeah. But <laughs> my question for Beyonce fans is. Why they they dwell on the negative aspect of their relationship? Like if they have moved on and they're starting to raise their family together, why are we still saying oh Jay ain't shit blah blah blah? blah. Yeah. But I think it's because that's the narrative that fits, you know, everybody's life, like the most people's lives right now. Because most of the people that are online are like real active on Twitter and things like that. Mm-hmm. They they dealt with it. I mean, most people have dealt with it. Period. You know, dealt with infidelity or you know just anything cheating and all that kind of stuff like people have dealt with that but since that's the most relatable part of their relationship that's the part everybody wants to stay on yeah so like yeah we, we jay is jay ain't shit jay, and then beyonce i'm talking about i love this man you know we working through it together yeah people are actually hear that shit yeah they're like, like fuck that, fuck that. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. but like you just said that's the best part about it is this relatable situation i can't relate to y'all talking about maybacks and shit yeah. they ain't riding around no t- t- uh, tearing the top off the Maybach. You know what I'm saying? So, but but I can talk about some cheating shit, right? You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, and I mean, but but my thing is, they're saying other relatable things, like they're talking about, uh, you know, reconciling, and, yeah, you know, having discussion and you know, uh, working out differences and making your relationship work. People don't relate to that either. So people are like, man, fuck that, I don't want to hear that. Yeah, because you fucked up. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But then, but that's the thing. So they talk about reconciling and stuff. But you can only talk about reconciling so much when somebody steady shooting little slugs in there too. Yeah. Because it was something that she said in there talking about was the second time, the second ring or some shit like that. You fuck yeah. the first one. Yeah, you shot, you giving ammunition to the people that's already on some hate shit. But they, but they know what they're doing with that because they know that they're going to react to that. Like, yeah. That's what they but, love. But that's what I'm talking about. But that's like, that's like Trump shit. That's like when somebody to his base and get red meat with her, right? Yeah. I'm going to talk about this immigration shit and talk about Muslim bans and stuff because I know y'all. That's what y'all want to hear. I can talk about, hey, we need to get the, the, the country right. We need to build a bridge together. Y'all be like, fuck that shit. Talk about kicking these goddamn Muslims and all these people out of, out right. of the country. They want, they want to hear, yeah. yeah, your base, like you said, your base wants to hear what they want to hear. And, and Beyonce and them know. Because really, the, the the music is centered towards Beyonce's fans. Yeah. Because Beyonce has a bigger fan base. Yeah. And so, like, since they have to center the music towards Beyonce fans, of course they're going to keep playing up. The shit that, that her beyond her her fans react to, okay. so like that. Because, that's why they make little jokes and shit. Because this is the thing. If Jay Z was to disappear today, yeah, seventy five to eighty percent of the world wouldn't give a shit. And I'm talking about like the only people that give shit is a lot of is f- about five percent of the whole country. Yeah. And then the other, uh, I say what seventy five eighty percent. I said eighty percent. Yeah. Wouldn't give a shit. Right, five percent would be people all over the country, whatever in the world. But, oh, she happened to Jay Z. The other fifteen percent would be niggas out on the East Coast. Right, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying the East Coast, like New York niggas love. Them. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I'm saying New York locked up. Fucking street poets, we love them to death and stuff like that. Yeah. But wouldn't give a shit if he left or disappeared because people would be like, as long as we still got Beyonce, we good. Right. But if we used to lose Beyonce and Jay Z still be here. It'll be fuck what you talking about. We gonna have. Memorials every fucking day, right? For losing her, or whatever the case may be. Like people, I, people really care about Beyonce, and I and I think just to kind of draw back to what we're talking about, like the the nuclear family that they have, like it's built on the fact that they work together, and so yeah. Beyonce knows that okay, well I want this scheme to work. We have a good business relationship. We got kids. We got to take care of. Like I, I think what people don't want to listen to or don't want to hear is how much work it takes to stay in something yeah. and, that, and to, to keep, you know, and I'm not saying keep fathers around because, you know, a lot of niggas just leave because he niggas leave. Mm-hmm. But like in some cases, like it, it doesn't have to be a split automatically. Mm-hmm. 
And so I think, and, and so like they've had this discussion before about how, you know, your, if you ask like your grandparents and stuff, how much they had to deal with to stay together for like 40 years, like they deal with a lot mm -hmm. of shit. And so like, in order for you to really understand that, you have to understand that there, there's a lot of shit you gotta go through, but people don't wanna deal with that. Mm -hmm. People don't wanna, people don't even wanna hear about dealing with that. Mm -hmm. And so like, that's why like in the albums, like them having love connections and talking about how happy they are in love, and like a lot of the other fans like, man, fuck that. I'm not fixing to be stressed for nobody. Yeah. But life is stressful. And no, no, life, life is very stressful, but then they kind of, talking about this kind of brings up something else too. Because it's kind of like with the whole point of marriage and stuff that everybody's talking about with that. People don't like that being said. I, I believe Jay-Z and Beyonce love each other. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like that. But it's a fucking business decision. It's a business. Like, it's a, it's a marriage is a business decision. Yeah, it's a business decision. And in, in his case, it, it really is a business decision. Because at the end of the day, if you weren't married to this woman, you wouldn't talk to Oprah. Right. Because Oprah was the longest, like, I don't talk to rappers. She didn't talk to fucking Ludacris. Right. You know what I'm saying? Ludacris is way, said way less shit than Jay-Z in his mm -hmm. career. Yeah. Ludacris ain't never somebody else was selling drugs and shit. Right. But you know what I'm saying? But you hang around Oprah with, with the Obamas and stuff like that. People that you wouldn't hang around if you wasn't with this woman. This woman helped your cloud. Yeah, I was going to say, that woman helped his uh, with his PR status. So, like, yeah. His public relations helped by being with yeah. Beyonce. He, like, he runs businesses, and that's why like, you're saying that like if Jay-Z disappeared, nobody would really care yeah. or know or you know, yeah. really pay any attention to it. Because Jay-Z, like, he's worked more in their relationship. It's because he has all these businesses. Yeah. The the face of their relationship is still gonna be beyond. Well, for example, like he uh he's a partner in Puma. Puma's get back into the uh the sports game where they sign like a couple of people that's getting drafted for the NBA. Yeah. Sign contracts with Puma. Puma's gonna be like a big player with Nike and everybody else for, for basketball shooting. Yeah. And stuff like that. So and he's like a top executive or whatever. He is trying to be the face of Puma. Yeah. Whatever. So. You know what I'm saying? For him to be in that, that's a big move. Yeah. People don't give a shit about that. They talking about the they talking about the Beyonce album that came out. Yeah. Not the the, the joint album, the Beyonce album. I mean, I give it to him because I say some people say the Carters. Yeah, the Carters, whatever, the, the Carters, whatever, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. they you know say they really want to say the noses, whatever, because yeah. they was like, you give a shit about your last name. Yeah, they don't so, like the people like you said, the people that care the most about the album are gonna be Beyonce fans. Yeah. So they're not gonna be like big Jay Z people. I'm like, you look, you look, we look at that. We're looking at the art for the album in the in the videos. Nigga, you look like you don't want to be there. You exactly. look like you was forced to be there. Yeah. You was forced to lay naked in the bed and shit and look retarded, looking like Mac and me. And, it, and if, if y'all remember that movie with the little alien dude and McDonald's and shit. But see, that's me. Like, if it's me, I, I don't, I don't understand how you wouldn't be excited about having naked pictures with Beyonce. Like, I would be smiling all the time. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, why is this nigga not happy? Yeah, you know, like, he's not just ecstatic every you know, day. I'm saying, I'm saying he don't look happy. Yeah. His hat happy and shit and stuff. He just he looked thrown away. But it's just kind of like I'm just here. I, I'm here because I fucked up. Basically, basically. But with the drawback, because we were supposed to be on that issue, we got on this Jay Z. Thing, <laughs> but uh, keep keep going. <laughs> you know yeah, but but what we talking about? Yeah, but basically, like, so I, the one big thing about it, since we still kind of talking about Jay Z, be honest, like one of the big things is that like. Their relationship stayed together, and it allowed him to be a father. And so, like, I, like I said, I don't, I don't want to push the fact that people need to have fathers in their lives or whatever. But having a male figure has its benefits. Yeah. Having having somebody there to you know treat their daughter like a princess or teach their son how to be a man. Because even in, because even just to draw into my own experience, like me and my dad's relationship, like growing up, eh, he was more of like scolding me for everything. Yeah. He was like, you know, even when I was playing sports, I remember when I'd come home from like soccer games or anything sports wise, and my mom would be like, oh, baby, you did okay. Yeah. You did good. You did good. Like, my mom would be real nice about it. My dad would be like, you suck, baby. Yeah, he'd be like, no, why didn't you do this? Like, yeah. Like, even when I was good, like, yeah. when I got to like main varsity and playing football and, and like all these other coaches, like, man, your footwork is great, blah, blah, blah. My dad be like, I mean, but you, you know, you missed the, uh, you, you missed the block on the, I'm like, yeah. no, come on. Like, everybody tell me how good the game was, yeah. and I got to listen to this when I come home. But just to have that there, to have somebody to be, you know, give you another perspective. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, like, to me, I, I feel like that's always good. But I have this question for you. So in light of the fact that we are a progressive society mm -hmm. and we're moving on past, you know, the, uh, 
what's the what's the word? The heteronormative. I'm about to say the general norms. Yeah. And stuff. <laughs> We're moving past heteronormative society. Yeah. Um, how do you, what do you think about like two parent households with the same sex? So like, okay, let me let me give this uh, this article that I read. <laughs> Pride like, Month. Yeah, it, it is Pride Month. Shout yeah. out to shout out to Pride Month. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we love our LGBTQ. Yeah. I mean, say, I, I, I'm not gonna go with the rest. I, I'm not, gonna, not disrespecting you. Plus, it's, it's like that's why yeah. you put the plus in. Yeah. But anyway, like so, this article I read actually did. It wasn't a lesbian couple, but it was two women that were living together. Yeah. And I so, seen the, black, the two black ladies. Two black ladies. I didn't read the article. I seen what you're talking about. Yeah, but yeah. I, I actually read the article, and it was actually a decent kind of thing because, like, okay, one of them got divorced, and the other one had like a living boyfriend that mm-hmm. you know they weren't really talking no more, so they kind of separated. And so, like, but the one that had lived in boyfriend had a five-year-old son. The lady that got divorced had a three-year-old son and a 13-year-old son. And, they and so, like, they they ended up saying, okay, they lived in New York. New York is expensive. They said, like, the median, like, the mean uh, average rent for, like, a two-bedroom was, like, um, I don't know, they needed a three-bedroom. And a three-bedroom was, like, $3,000 a month. Yeah. So they were like, it's ridiculous. We can't do it by ourselves and raise these kids. So what they did was they moved in together and they ended up, you know, giving, making the master bedroom, the room for all the boys. And so all the boys shared the master bedroom and then like one woman had her room and the other woman had the other room. And they just worked together, you know, raising the kids. Like if, if they, kids need to be picked up, when I pick them up, if one of them wanted to go out that night, like the one that had a boyfriend or whatever, she still would go stay with her boyfriend sometimes. Okay. And the other one would watch her son for her. And mm-hmm. keep, so it's basically a two parent household. Yeah. So I, I sometimes wonder because, you know, when they used to do adoptions, they wouldn't allow same sex parents to adopt. They still don't. They still don't? Mm-hmm. Well, what I'm saying, well, it's, a, it's a certain extent because it's harder for same sex parents to, oh, to, yeah. to adopt. Yeah. No, I'm saying it's way harder, but it's even harder for regular families, a male and a female, to adopt. Like you can have a, a regular income, like yeah. a nice income and stuff like that, and they still find certain issues that you give you reasons you can't adopt. Adoption is very hard for some damn reason. Yeah, and that and that's what's so crazy to me is like, um, like that that they wouldn't allow same sex parents to, to adopt because like I'm reading this article, and you can see how having two parents in the household is like real beneficial, yeah. even if they are both women. Yeah, I mean I. To an extent, I feel like you still need a man around somewhere mm-hmm. just to help since you got boys. Yeah. But I, at the same time, I think that anybody that has a two parent household is cool because, like, I, you know, I work in schools, so like we see kids all the time that have like two dads, yeah. they have two moms or whatever, and I think that having that is better than nothing. Nothing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And so. I don't understand why they don't allow same sex parents to adopt, but that's getting away from what I was trying to say. Yeah, but but but, but you're saying though, like you, you, you it's, a, it's a joint effort for whoever you deal with. If you're dealing with a man and a woman, or two women, two men, whatever, everything like raising kids and or a family, or whatever, takes a two person effort. Yeah. And if you one, if you like to say a single parent, or whatever, that's a struggle. And you know, what I'm saying we shouldn't have to go through stuff like that. But if you can have a situation where you have two loving people that's going to take your situation. Why not? Have Okay, so my question, this is a long way around to my question, but yeah. my question is, how do you think, do you think that they need a male? Like, let's say if it were two women raising a child, do you think a male is necessary? At some point in life. Like, the male doesn't have to be your partner. The male has to be, but that's but that's the whole premise of we going back to um, a village raising a child. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's why that term was always used, whatever. Like, yeah, you might not have a male... I'm growing up as a male in my house, whatever, but I have a male presence in the household. Yeah. But um my friend down the street, he has his dad. His dad looks out for me. Yeah. Or I have a coach, whatever, that looks out for me, or a certain teacher that looks out for me. Mm-hmm. And stuff like that that teaches me stuff, whatever, or uncles, whatever case of family members, everybody takes effort into raising that person. And we don't do that, a lot of people don't have that village anymore. Whatever. Everybody's kinda like left to your own devices because everybody now in the progressive world we live in, it's like, I'm on my own shit. Yeah. I ain't got time to worry about, about your kids, I ain't worried about mine and shit. And it's this, just, like, society in general is just selfish. Yeah. Because it's like, it, it, everything we do is like, okay, I'm looking out for myself, like, and don't touch my kids, don't tell my kids nothing. Because, I mean, it happens even, like, in the school. Mm-hmm. Like, 
we have to be able to like discipline kids mm -hmm. or at least tell them something where they wrong. Mm -hmm. But you'll have parents come up to the school to be like, you can't, you can't discipline my child. You can't yeah. talk to my child. Like, I mean, so what do you want us to do? Because I mean, and, and so that's what makes it hard for me. Like when people don't have a male in the house, like I said, I don't think that you necessarily have to be with a man because they're women that live together. Yeah. They're single mothers and they can be fine by themselves. They're strong, independent women. That's fine. But I think that like having a male around is important. You need some type of male influence and yeah. stuff in your life. But like I say, like like I said, going back to my life, like me and my dad, whatever, um, playing sports, playing little league and stuff. I remember it was I had partners that I played little league with that didn't have dads in their life, and we used to have practice with them. We used to go pick them up yeah. and bring the practice with them and bring my dad, bring them home and stuff like that. And that takes a we look at it back then like that was nothing. Right, but yeah. if you look at it now, it's like that is really big to be like, hey, this ain't my son, but you're cool with my son, and I'm gonna treat you like you want to mine, especially when you're with me. Yeah. So you know what I'm saying? You good? Like I said, when we used to practice whatever, it's not like we have practice after practice or whatever. We stop at the store. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Get Gatorade, Powerade, something like that. Like my dad gonna buy me something. I'm gonna give you some money. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know money. So, you, uh, yeah, you, you stuck out till you get home. I hope you got some water at the house. Yeah, I hope you got some water at the house. You know what I'm saying? Like, if my dad was going to feed me whatever, he's feeding whoever was with me. Yeah. Or whatever the case may be. And that's how you're supposed to be, but you don't really see that. Yeah, and because people, are, like I said, people are more more or less, like, so selfish and so kind of self-centered nowadays yeah. that, like, if you if you do things like that, you got to worry about having a backlash from it still. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, I'm, I'm going to go buy him a Gatorade. Who you to buy my son some Gary? Like I ain't got nothing in my house. Like, like, yeah, that's, that's, that's what you were saying. Like with the school thing, some was bad last. Because like I say, we ended up in school. We was in school. Our parents were like, yeah, kick his ass. Right. You know what I'm saying? He fucking up. You know what I'm saying? He ain't doing what he's supposed to do. Kick his ass. Right. But like you know what I'm saying? Now, now parents come to the schools like, did you tell you told my son to sit down? Like why did you talk to him in that tone? Like bitch, I'll fight you and stuff. And it's like fight your kid. Don't yeah. fight. You know what I'm saying? Cause your kid is wrong or whatever. Yeah, you're gonna make me lose my job by whooping your ass. So. Yeah. <laughs> no, man, it's just the stupid shit. But uh yeah, so like I, I think that I think that like I said, males are kinda necessary. I mean not necessarily like I said, not necessarily they have to be in the household, but they need to be some way connected. Even if it's like a woman and her her uncle or her cousin or something that you know, every once in a while I pick up the pick up the little boy and take him to the basketball court or you know what I'm saying, they it's a it's a family that where you see a male, you know, kind of working like living with a female and treating her right and things mm -hmm. like that like even if it's not necessarily you because you haven't found the right man like i mean i think even young girls need to see that men aren't necessarily bad because i like if you've had bad experiences with men i don't want to take that away from a woman that has bad experience with men i just want to say that like yes that these things are negative but not everybody is bad and they need like all children all people need to see that like especially for black men they need to see that like we are as bad as you know people try to portray us to be. Well, just like I say, you know, like I said, I'm not even talking like like I said, especially with black men, but just like I said, just the male influence. Period. Like when you look at talking about going back to the sitcom thing, when you see a lot of the sitcoms, they always have their one kid that wasn't here with his family. He was always with the main family and the other thing. Right. Yeah. So you had the first prince, whatever, and that's not his main family. Yeah. You had Steve Urkel that was always at the damn Winslow's house. And they treat him like, even though he was annoying as shit, they treat him like he won his own. Yeah. On the Pill Cosby, you had Bud. Bud. <laughs> always over that shit like that. They always treated him like he was one of the, one of the family. Yeah, yeah. And like I say, that's how you have to be. Like, I remember, um, did you watch uh, the second season of Dear White People? Yeah, yeah. Well, okay, when her dad died. Yeah. And old girl that she always getting into with that act white, whatever, was like, no, I'm going to the funeral. Because, because she's like, even though we fell out before whatever, your dad still talked to me. Right. And stuff. Your dad was always good. we. Uh, he always talked to me and always told me to keep on going and stuff like that. Yeah. So, you no, know, so that wasn't that man's responsibility to do that. But because at one time if you was with his daughter, he considered you like his daughter too. Make mm -hmm. sure you was taking care of what. And I, and I and I want to add this before we get out of the get out of this topic is the the other thing is yes I, I believe that you should always have a man around but also as men we have to be we have to be that type of a man too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The word, like, we, we are that type of man, like you said, like your dad would be, where yeah. when, when I see a kid doing something, or, or if it's a kid that's connected to my kid, like, even if it's not mine, I'm going to help. Yeah. Because, like, I want them to see that there's a positive male role model, okay? So, 
even if like the, the mom, like I don't, that's why I say I don't want people, women to think that I'm saying you got to go search out a man for your son to be around or search out a man for your daughter to see doing positive things. But I think that at the same time, men need to be presenting themselves in a positive aspect so that outside people can see it, whether you are with the woman or not. And I think that's where a lot of this kind of gets confused is because a lot of men act a certain way because they're trying to get a woman. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But like, even if you already have a woman or you're not looking for a woman or whatever, it's, it's good to be a positive male because you never know who's watching and who you can influence that doesn't have a male figure to look to. Look to. They don't have a father to look to. They don't have an uncle to look to. But they just see this random dude that work at uh, AutoZone every time I come by there. Like, I, I walk by AutoZone on the way home. He come and speak to me every time I see him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, like, I think that all males need to, like I said, especially black males, we need to present ourselves so that other other people can see us as a positive influence because kids need that. Well, I'm saying kids, kids need that, whatever, but it's also, well, how do you say the old saying, like, reach one, teach one yeah. type of thing? Because you have to be like that. You got to be like, at the end of the day, you see a younger kid, I was you at a certain point in time. Right. And I know how just one minor interaction to me in, in this day or whatever could mean so much to you. Yeah. And going forward, what okay can be like you're saying, I teach you, I see you over there struggling, uh, trying to tie a tie or you're trying to oh, yeah, yeah. fix something, whatever. And I offer, like, hey, what you trying to do? You know what I'm saying? And offer that help. You never, and, and teach you the right way to do something. You never know how much that can help somebody continue their, their process of growing. Yeah, I mean, and, and like like I said, being in education, you see it a lot. Mm -hmm. But And I, I like to, it, it gives you a feeling of like, you know, you feel like you've made a difference in somebody's life. Because like, like you said, tie to tie is one of the big things. So mm -hmm. we used to have, like when I was coaching back in the day, like we used to have kids that would dress up for game days. Mm -hmm. Nothing, some of them never had ties. So I, I used to have a whole bunch of ties. Yeah. They, they used to dress up all the time. And so, like, I would bring ties, and like, hey, you can have this tie, you can have this tie. They, oh, I appreciate it, coach, blah, blah, blah. And then, like, I have to teach them how to tie the tie. Mm -hmm. And, like, you, you'd be surprised how good of a feeling you get after the kids, like, oh, wow, I never knew how to do that before. And, like, they actually yeah. learn something. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? You wearing, because, like, let's keep it 100. You know what I'm saying? These kids, a lot of people ain't got money and stuff like that. So they got, the, yeah. so they got the, the not fitted shirt, uh, dress shirt, they got the Walmart special yeah. and stuff like that. You putting a tie on them, whatever. And you even tie, you know, she got to tie this tie, whatever. You will see the the way they act and their presence change. Mm -hmm. Where they feel like, oh, I'm looking good and shit. You, know, you can't tell me nothing. Exactly. And so, but in, in that tie or that situation, change that whole kind of confidence. Yeah. You just never know. And and that's why I say like, I want I want males to continue to be a positive influence because there's so much negative. There's so much negative influence on, on TV. There's so much negative influence in the world. I mean, it's a lot. And, and like, I, I don't want to go out. Like, I don't want to get out of this subject without saying this. There are a lot of ain't shit niggas in the world. Yeah. Like, a lot of these niggas ain't shit. Like, so that people ain't lying when they say, oh, niggas ain't shit. Well, it's a lot of them. But, but in the best way to, to just be 100% honest about it, like I say, and again, like, these are our opinions. Right. For everything. Like, we, you asked me the question earlier, like, how can... A lot of uh, us break the cycle, well, break the thing of uh, getting out of the daddy issues that we might have suffered. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, one way to not, like I say, us having to work through that, you have to work through it, counseling, or whatever, can be talking to people, can, right. and stuff like that. But the one way to break that cycle is for niggas to stop being ain't shit niggas and be in your kid's life. Even if you're not with that woman, yeah, or whatever the case may be, you know what I'm saying, like that, take care of your responsibilities and make sure your child understands, like, hey, this is what it is to grow up, be a man, or the case may be, to have responsibility. And, and the other thing is, like, um, I know a lot of niggas will say, oh, man, well, you know, I be trying, but, you know what I'm saying, my baby mom be tripping and stuff like that. I understand it, but I want I want men to, I want men to take women to court. Like, if, if yeah. that's the case, that they doing all of this to you, take that woman to court like they would you. Yeah. Like, they get child, men can get child support just like women do. Hey, you know what I'm saying, it's a perfect segue into the, the Jesse Williams and Darius McCurry song. Oh, okay, yeah. So we're going to move right along to the uh, the line about saying real quick. So, well, well yeah. So we're going to talk about child support. Yeah. Because, <laughs> uh, so today, well, not what today, it was like two days ago. Two yeah. Days ago. But like, uh, Jesse Williams, the green-eyed bandit from, uh, yeah. <laughs> Grey's Anatomy. Grey's Anatomy. Uh, you know, he's very active. Like, active yeah, activist and stuff. Yeah, active activist. Um, he was... They, they the judges ordered him to pay a hundred thousand dollars a month in spousal and child support. Now yeah. the, the thing is, he was already paying fifty thousand a month. 
Yeah. And so they just, the judge decided to raise it because he, he did it in California. So in California, the judge can raise it whenever he feels like Yeah, they always screw you in California. Right. They say you never have a house in California. Yeah. They, 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 they say, yeah, you get married in California. If you divorce, it's up to the judge's discretion how much money your spouse gets. So even though she, like, she, I think she only asked for like fifty thousand. Yeah, because she's the judge not, upped it to a hundred. Yeah, because she said she couldn't survive. Yeah. Off of what she was getting, because she was getting a nice little sum of yeah. money, but she's like, she she couldn't afford her lifestyle. Yeah, she couldn't afford to keep the lifestyle that she was used to. Now, mind you, this nigga Jesse Williams was pulling in five hundred and twenty thousand a month. Mm-hmm. So I mean, he he close to about six million a year, and well, he close to about seven million a year, <laughs> and then he giving up one. But this, but this, but, but this is the issue I have. Like I said, he's still winning. No, he, for, he's for, still with with four hundred thousand and whatever else he got his hands on, but this is my thing. It's like it's the same thing like an athlete. Like he's making, he's probably making about a good chunk of that money, a good eighty percent of that money from Grayson Anatomy. Right. Grayson Anatomy get canceled next next week. Where that, where, where that money coming from? Yeah, he got to find a job. You know what I'm saying? Which like I say, which that ruling came down like I said a couple of days ago. The funny part about it, the day before that, um, Darius McCreary. Eddie Winslow, yeah. uh, superhead his husband. He came out of his court case with his kid. He got his child support reduced to twenty nine dollars a month. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how he got yeah. twenty nine dollars a month because I know niggas that got regular jobs don't pay that little amount. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So <laughs> I think ain't got no money. I don't know how he finesses that to happen. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's because he's not bringing in a monthly income because like I, I'm sure he the most he's living off of right now is like residuals maybe mm-hmm. of like old shit that he did because I haven't seen Darius McCreary in anything in a long time and that's that's his job is acting so like yeah. if you have if you and that's the thing about actors like if you haven't seen them in anything that means they're really not making no money yeah well he got, he got some he has some projects coming up that, that's what everybody was like that's why his name been in the news because. Well, I think it's some show that's going to be on own or something like that called uh-huh. Monogamy or something like that. Mm-hmm. Whatever I think he's in. But then he's got some theater some theater stuff coming up too. Yeah. So, but like you say, it's still just finesse. Like, I know people ain't got shit yeah. that's paying at least a couple of hundred. Yeah, I was saying, you get a couple hundred, is, a couple hundred is low for child support. Yeah. So, but you are a well known actor and shit that's going to be you $20 a month. Yeah. So, that's, that's, that's just the real in each end of each spectrum. I was gonna say I, I feel like it, it has to have something to do with the fact that like his, his monthly income is low or something for right now until the checks clear for whatever projects he's working on maybe and maybe he he used that as a catalyst for him to get his child support payments lower. Whatever he did, he did for me. Well, I'm saying it's like I'm saying just child support, like I said with the daddy issues, it's like that child support is just a sketchy thing anyway. Cause I, think, I believe child support sometimes creates a lot of daddy issues because um, like they had a picture of like this uh, this little baby or whatever. And her mama, like, they both were dressed in Gucci. Yeah. And so, like, and the baby was looking at the mama, and they had, like, a little caption talking about, damn, whole way, uh, that money was supposed to be for me. Yeah. And stuff like that. Why you, why you got Gucci on, too? All right? Hey. And stuff. So, because you have situations like that, people are like, I need to afford my lifestyle. It's like, right, wrong or not, you need to get the fucking job. Yeah, like, so that's, that's not your lifestyle. And, yeah. And I had, like, this conversation before, um, but I was just talking about people that are married. Because for some reason, I got... Uh, I was watching the Housewives of the Potomac. Okay. So like, and like all of them were talking about all this money stuff, and like they got into it because they're like, "Oh, you only here because your husband got money, blah blah blah." Yeah. I'm like, "Well, I'm only out here because your husband got money." Yeah. And then so like, um, I was talking to my girl about it, and she was like, "You know, well, when they get married, it's both of their money." Mm-hmm. I was like, "I feel you," but at the same time, like, like when you run into a situation like this, yeah. where like Jesse Williams situation, where he he was with his wife. And I understand she she deserves some kind of money for putting up or whatever and having having the kids all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, the the lifestyle that you're trying to keep up isn't necessary. Now, if you're talking about a lifestyle for your kids, I understand. Yeah. But if you're talking about you, like you trying to keep up a lifestyle that I created, yeah. That that's not your lifestyle. That's my lifestyle. You're trying to keep. Yeah. Up. <laughs> and, 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 and like I say, and like I say, there's a lot of ain't shit guys out here and stuff like that. But for situations like that, I can't be mad like at fifty cent. Like, but his oldest son, he was talking cat cash shit. Like, he's my off on a dog party or whatever because he's making his last payment. Yeah. And so, because at the end of the day, if you haven't done anything to progress your living situation in your life, you've been living off the money that I've been giving you. Right. Then, yeah, that money is, it has an expiration date on it. Yeah, it's going to dry up eventually. So, so, when it dries up, what you going to say? Like, the kid is older now and stuff like that. So, whatever chick she was getting, 
you want to do something about it. Man, I don't know. But all I know is that Justin Williams is, I mean, he's going to take that L. But, I mean, he's still winning because I heard he messed with Taylor Brooks and stuff now, too. So, oh, yeah, so it's gonna, all good. Yeah, it's all good for him. Like I got to say, I got to say, he's, he's out here still uh, ripping for the black man. Yeah, and then holding it down. Holding it down, down with, with his green eyes and shit. Yeah. But uh, the other thing that came up, um, speaking of, like, just, I guess, relationship, is, uh, I, mean, I, I guess it's not really tiny. That was a bad segue. Okay. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so, uh, so Triple X to Nazion. Yeah, that's a bad segue. Yeah, that was a terrible <laughs> segue. <laughs> that's why I, I just stopped myself. Speaking of taking L's, <laughs> yeah. that's fucked up. <laughs> yeah, that's why I stopped myself because I couldn't figure out what I was going to say next. But, uh, <laughs> keep that same energy. Like, keep it, speaking of taking L's, on the uh, Triple oh, X man, Tentacion. Like, yeah, no, but Triple X Tentacion, uh, he ended up getting killed. Um, not, not, yeah, not, not the best fight. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, he, he ended up getting killed uh, outside of a bike shop in... Florida somewhere. Yeah. Um, well, now it's like just like uh fucking uh, Prince, uh Jay Prince said though. You, you out here campaigning. You ain't gonna get elected. Eventually, you gonna get elected, man. Yeah. And, and and so I wanted to bring this up for a couple reasons. So I mean, of course, it, it's sad that he got killed. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, and I hate that I said but after that too. Yeah. But <laughs> at the same time, like there was, it brought up a debate because Triple X Tentacion. I think had like a a shorty version. I'm just say X. Yeah. So this dude X had uh, some pending charges on him. Uh, he was supposed to be going to court for um, abusing his pregnant girlfriend, raping and kidnapping. Yeah. Charges. It, it, it had like attempted rape, kidnapping, uh, some other stuff, and then of course really bad not, shit. Yeah. Like like and then like the pictures of her like beat up and her eye bloody and like yeah. she had to get surgery to correct her vision and that kind of stuff. Like, yeah. So he beat he beat the brakes off her. Like yeah. it was bad. Yeah, but anyway, so like it, it brought up this debate about uh, people not feeling sorry for him dying. How do you feel about that? Glad you asked that because yeah. I did have some feelings <laughs> on this shit. All right, I feel like this with some people that's dying in the, in the world we live in. Yeah. Sometimes it's just best to be like, "Hey, sad story, tragedy. Um, rest in peace, bless his family. Yeah. Keep fucking moving." Because exactly. there's no reason to bring up his pitfalls and there's no reason to bring up his, his successes. Because at the end of the day, we all, a lot of people are all fucking flawed. Some people more than others. And I'm not going to be on the side of, oh, we should celebrate this man. You know what I'm saying? But then like, oh, you know what I'm saying? He made some great music. Like Kanye tweeting that. He, yeah, man, you were so creative. No You're so creative. And I wish we had time, this and that. Oh, I'm just going to hate the fact that you beat the shit out of this woman at your baby mama and shit right. like that. It's like, because this is my thing. For all these, all these, I'm gonna say it like this: all these motherfuckers out here, that's <laughs> out here, you know, what I'm saying hyping up this uh, extentacion or whatever. Like I said, I'm not even fucking mad at you, but y'all better have the same fucking energy when Bill Cosby died. Exactly, that's so, what I'm saying. Like you can't, you can't look at one person and say, yeah, they fucked up, but I mean, I like them and they cool, so it, like it's cool. It's, and that's why, like my my whole thing was, I, I, I think that the, there's a gray area in there, and I think that's where I like to exist. Yeah, to where I'm like. I'm not. I'm not gonna celebrate the dude dying because I don't want anybody to die. No. I think. I think justice should have been served for him. Yeah. I think he should have been locked up, and I think that everything should have been stripped away from him for what he did. But at the same time, I'm not gonna be like, you know, yeah. I hope this nigga die in his sleep or some shit like that. Like, I, I don't wish death on nobody unless you know, extenuating circumstances yeah. of him, like killing people. Then yeah. Yes, I want them to die. Yeah. But like, as far as just you know, doing things to people, I think that penance should be paid to those people. A uh, penance should be paid to those people, you know, as that time comes. But you know what I'm saying? I, I just couldn't get with the whole people getting celebrated death. But I also, on the con- on the contrary side of that, I can't really get with people super defending him either. So like, I like T Pain been going hard for like three days. Yeah, I seen somebody like, look at your daddy in the face. Yeah, look, look at your daddy in the face and ask him if he's ever hit a woman. Yeah, like, hey, 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 what? Hey, you hit my mom before? Yeah, and yeah, look at his silence. It's so like that. I'm like, what the fuck is that? Like niggas was on the on the timeline talking about like, hey, you know what I'm saying everybody done fucked up before. I'm like, nigga, I didn't punch the shit out of no woman, dog. Like, yeah, everybody <laughs> fucked up. Everybody kidnapped the bitch before. Yeah, I mean, so, you done hit a bitch before, man. I mean, yeah, no, no, nigga, no, not. no, that's not me. That's not in my DNA to do that. But like, and I understand the argument they're trying to make. I just think it was the wrong hill to die on at that moment. 
because they were, everybody was talking about you know he won't, him only being twenty, and I actually brought that up on the timeline too because I was like, I feel that he's only twenty and he did have room to grow, and I, I saw like I, I noticed a lot of posts about him getting help and like how he was trying to turn his life around, he was doing charitable stuff and all that kind of stuff, like he was trying to get to another point in his life, and that's all well and good, but. I'm not going to excuse it just because, like, oh, well, he was only 20. He's just a kid. I'm like, but when I, and somebody, everybody was on the time I was talking about, you know, you know you did stuff when you were 20. But I was like, dog, the, the, the bad things I did when I was 20 weren't nowhere near that. Like, mine was, like, smoking weed and drinking 40s. Not yes. just beating women and raping people. trying to rape them with yeah. a barbecue fork. Man, yeah. Like, that's not, that, that's on a whole other level that I was not at it 20 years old. Yeah, I know what I'm saying. Like, oh, he was just, he was just being immature. What the fuck? Yeah, that, that's not like, oh, that's just kids. Like, oh, he raped somebody. You know, kids will be kids. No, my nigga, that's, that's wrong. Yeah. And, and, you know, and, okay, so let me dial it back. Yeah. Because this, is, this has to do with therapy and counseling because they were like, you know, uh, people can grow and they can, you know, develop from a certain point, you know, to through counseling and therapy that they can, you know, grow and get past that and they become a new person. And I understand that. And I, and I agree. I agree that people should be able to, you know, work through their problems or whatever. Because he had a terrible childhood. His mama gave him up when he was a baby. Yeah. He was passed around his whole life. And so, like, he had no sense of, like, family. He, he was messed up. Like, he had a messed up childhood, which is why he was kind of off. And so he was still coping with that. And that's why, like, by the time he was 17, he was already locked up. Mm. And so, like, of course he needed some help. But I'm not going to say, hey, it's cool that, you know, he was working through some things. That's why he beat the shit out of that girl. That's why he raped people. I, you know, I can't say that that's, that's a coping mechanism that I can be okay with. Yeah. Some people deserve to be locked up. Now, can they be rehabilitated? Maybe. He didn't reach that point. So I can't say, oh, well, because like I saw comparisons to him and Malcolm X and Maya Angelou, and I'm yeah. like, come on, dog. Like, people, y'all, y'all pushing it now. People, I seen somebody, somebody, him and what's the dude, the, the white rapper, Lil Pip, whatever, that died. Yeah. Like, the older, it's like they were like the, the Tupac and Biggie of our generation. No, come on, And bro. I was like, what nah. the fuck? Like, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's what pissed me off. I was like, come on, don't do that. But you got kids like who's that? K Michelle came on. Uh, oh, yeah. and she went out talking about like we don't know what's going on. Like her son is devastated and stuff. I'm like, first off, your son should be listening to that depressing ass music and stuff like that because like, like there's nothing happy about a lot of the music that comes out now. And it's like, not even that he couldn't listen to it. But the thing is, like, even if he listens to that music, because we listen to a lot of music. But yeah, somebody else should have some influence on your son's life besides no. that music. But 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 I guess I guess my point is for that is that just shows that who we idolize and who right. who, who exactly. controls us. Like you you in the entertainment business and your son don't look to you. He's devastated about somebody that he ain't fucking met and all something. He's fucking. But like I say, we've everybody has somebody to latch onto. Like Selena died, people fucking went off. Yeah, and stuff like that. So I understand that having an attachment to somebody, whatever. Right? But it's like. You need to be more in your kids' lives, or whatever. It's like, cause, like, if this is my thing. People went off and was went mad crazy. Selena died, whatever. Yeah. So, so like, bitty bitty bum bum or something like that. Corpus Christi. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm saying stand yeah. up. No, I'm saying <laughs> Texas fine. But that was like people enjoyed her music. A lot of that dude's music is like sad and depressing, and it's but just kind of like. The kids said that they it like spoke to their like teenage angst. But then it's my thing. It's like, what the fuck is wrong with you kids? Like, it, 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 it's no, a, no, no, what I'm talking about. That starts the conversation. Like, we really need to get to these kids and be like, hey, yeah. if this is what y'all, if this is what he's speaking to y'all soul, what about it? Because yeah. you, you know what? People like my age and, and old, a little bit older, whatever, they spoke to their soul, R&B music. Yeah. When, like the sad songs, whatever, your gal left you, some shit like that. That spoke to your soul. Like, nah, his, his should be like, kill yourself kind of no, music. No, that's like, wow. Like, like, one of my favorite songs, whatever. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's kind of depressing, but at the same time, it makes you feel like, fuck everything. But I don't want to kill myself. Right. Fucking, uh, zero. One D. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Do what? that, just be in one D. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> fuck it. If you know, bitch ass nigga, put the BS. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> But that just gave me like fuck everybody. I'm on my own shit. Yeah, I'm not fuck everybody. I'm out. Yeah, I'm gonna go slip my wrist yeah, and shit. Go, life over with my nigga. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, what kind of shit is that? Like somebody need to get to these kids and be like, hey, y'all gotta uh, dial it back a little bit. Yeah, man. Like it, it's just crazy. Welcome to the that, Cash Money days. I just shake your ass and and, and I already talk about cars and shit. And you know, they 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 want people to tap into their emotions. Like you said, it, it's just it it. 
the whole situation lets us know that there's a lot of stuff that needs to be addressed. One of which, like you said, is kids and yeah. how, how they are processing information and things like that. Oh, and one of the other things I said about this, and then we'll be done with this, mm -hmm. uh, is, and this is kind of a bad way to look at it, but I think that one of the things that I noticed whenever uh, he actually got killed, mm -hmm. and one of the things I said was, I mean, kids need to know that there are consequences. And I think the kids don't realize that there are consequences to doing all this trolling and all that kind of stuff because it, it, everything's a game. Everything is just, oh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. You know, it, oh, yeah, I'm going to go talk shit to these people. I'm going to do this. I'm going to. I'm gonna show guns and I'm gonna act fun. I'm gonna act, you know, crazy or whatever. And I'm just gonna do crazy shit because that's what it's what's cool right now. What's cool is trolling, and so like this dude gets shot, and all of a sudden, you know, kids have to come to the realization that dog, this is real life. Yeah. Like at the end of the day, there there's still people dying out here. A good example was right underneath that post, um, uh, Takashi Six Nine was commenting on it, and he was like. Hey man, I don't know. I mean, I think I may be trolling too much. Blah blah. blah. Like no, I mean, like now, now you nervous. Well, he nervous that he <laughs> should be dead. Like yeah, or obviously that he did, he should he, be dead. That, that would have been, I, that really should have been him. I mean, well, not not to wish death on him, but I'm just saying, like in, in the situation that he's put himself in, he would have been the one I thought to get shot first. And and that's another thing too. Like I know they're killing niggas left and right in Chicago. Like less people out there that's going yeah. through stuff like that. But he also shows a lot of niggas pussy. Cause, mm. cause, like I said, I don't wish death on nobody. But to do something that you doing, if niggas are really on that that gun talk, he, but he's he's playing a, like he's playing a game, and it's a dangerous one because like they did you see the video that came out? Like I think it was today. Mm -hmm. They had like some traffic cam footage of O Block where he was supposed to be. When yeah. Shot the video. Yeah. They showed the traffic cam footage, and he had gotten out at like three something in the morning. Yeah, because he got off the plane, he got there because they, yeah. like, they was laughing. They they sent the report, and they was like how. The goddamn hood and turned to investigators and shit. Yeah. To, to uh, another 48, because they was like, we was on old block. When the fuck he was at? They was like, they checked the weather. It rained at 4 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And then it stopped. And then, and then he, like, he came right off his plane, shot the video, and it burnt out. Yeah, they, they actually have, but the traffic cam video shows him getting out of the van, yeah. standing there, shooting the video for 10 seconds, and jumping right back in the van and taking off. Yeah. Like, he was outside at that at old block, like less than 30 seconds. Yeah. He was out there, shot the video, got out. And so, like, that's why I said he's he's trolling. And that's yeah. why he, he commented on there. He's like, maybe I need to stop trolling so much. Because he's he's playing this game, and the kids think that shit's funny. Yeah. And, I, and I think that, I, and like I said, this is a terrible way for them to go through it. But I hope that this is, like, a wake-up call to kids for them to be like, damn, that there's real life out here that I'm playing with. Well, like I was saying, in his case, where, like, Charlamagne said, Charlamagne the God, they said, uh, he was like, yeah, rappers don't kill each other. Right. People they know kill you. Yeah, people, random, other, people. random people that kill yeah. you. Because like I said, you go on the old block talking shit. Yeah, whoever you, whatever Chicago rapper you beefing with or talking shit to, he ain't going to kill you. Uh -huh. But it's going to be a random nigga off old block. It's going to be like he disrespecting the hood. Yes. And then we got shit that nigga up. So, niggas that ain't, they, it's a lot of niggas out there that ain't got shit to lose. Nah, hey, <laughs> and man. you got a lot to lose, so you might want to... Hey, know, niggas got the hood tat on your chest and shit like that. Nigga ain't going to come disrespect your shit. No, so, they ain't not, man. But... Let me go ahead and wrap this thing up, man. Um, we're going to move right into the Wu-Tai segment. We're going to make it a quick one. So for the Wu-Tai segment, I just wanted to kind of, since, since we had kind of some debate, I know a lot of debate sprung up over the uh, XXX Tentacion thing. A lot of debate has come up about a lot of different things. And what I've noticed in debates, especially on social media, is that people will tell you that your opinion is wrong and give you their opinion and say their opinion has to be right. Yeah. And so, for our Wu-Tai segment is, I, I want people to be a little bit more um, secure. Be a little bit more sure of yourself, a little bit more secure in the things you say. You don't have to necessarily be right, but you don't have to necessarily be wrong. Everything is not always black and white. True. And I think we, we spoke on this, like, oh, now that I think about it, we did this a few weeks ago when I talked about uh, people having polarized thoughts. Yeah. So, like, and, and I think in arguments, it's, it's a lot worse. Because people kind of get to the point where they're like, either I'm right or I'm wrong. And either you're right or you're wrong. So if I'm right, you're wrong. If you're right, I'm wrong. So we're going to fight until one of us proves that we're right and yeah. you're wrong. Yeah, so somebody give up. Yeah, somebody got to give up because somebody got to be right in this. But yeah. that's not necessarily how shit works. Yeah. So like, it's definitely a shade of gray. So like, even with the whole um, Tentacion situation, like I, I think the shade of gray in there was that it's okay for some people to not 
care that he got killed because they've been through traumatic experiences. They've been through, you know, abuse or rape. And so when they think of those things, they think about rape and the things that have happened to them, then of course their first thought is, no, that motherfucker needs to die. Oh, yeah. And they, because they think about the things that happened to them and they want that person to die or whatever. And, but at the same time, those people have to be understanding. Well, they don't have to be understanding, but they can like scroll past or ignore people that don't feel that way. Yeah. People that were like, I don't know anything about that. I'm not sure of it. But what I do know is these positive things that he did. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So those people are positive and they're like, you know, I'm really hurt by his passing and all that kind of stuff. These people can coexist in the world. It doesn't have to be one or the other. It can be, okay, you feel that way. I feel this way. And there could be people like me that are like, I understand either side. I'm not moved either way by the kids passing. I understand that he did have room to grow for that side of the people that are really mourning. Mm-hmm. You know, he did have room to grow. But I'm also on the side of people like, he fucked some shit up while he was here. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, like, I'm, I, there would be people like me that, you know, I'm kind of in the middle. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm, I'm saying, but you have to always understand that everybody's not going to agree with you. Right. Like, they always say the saying, what is it, uh, uh, three people going to agree with you, whatever you say, three people not going to agree with you, and four people will be going to be on the fence. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, like I'm saying, if you're seeking a bunch of simple proof about whatever they're talking about, that's not going to happen. Because no. everybody's not going to agree or approve what you're talking about. So to browbeat them, to try to get them to come to your side, you know what I'm saying? That's not, you know what I'm saying? You're not speaking in facts or whatever. Because like I say, you can give some people, and that's, and that's another thing and that's created by our society, created by our president, like with alternative facts and everything and things of that nature. Where people, you can tell somebody and give them factual statements about, hey, X, Y, Z, this is why this is. Mm-hmm. And they were still like, well, that's your truth. Yeah, that's that's not true for me. So yeah. that's not the facts. But I mean, like I said, it, you, you have to learn, and people have to learn to exist in a world where people are going to disagree. Yeah. People are going to disagree. You may not be right. They may not be right. Both of y'all could be wrong. Like I said, there's three sides to every story. So even if you're yeah. telling the story, one person going to tell one thing, one person going to tell another, and somewhere in the middle of that is the truth. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's same thing for arguments, debates, anything like that. Just remember that, you know, the, the, give, leave some room for some gray. And I know, that, like I said, we, we've discussed this before, but just because all these arguments have come back up, because all these mm, these polarizing ideas have been coming up, I want, you know, people to really focus on trying to understand each other. Yeah. So that's it for the Wusa, man. Uh, anything before we get out of here? Oh, I want to shout out... Um, uh, my, my dude G Rose, he's a DJ. They they're doing a a, a brunch ish. It's at this bar called I have no idea, but it, it's at like it's on Main Street, like right on the corner over there by UHD. If I get some more information, I'll put it on the we'll put it on the um, description. I'll put it in the description and I'll put it in the uh, I'll probably tweet it out later on, maybe be on Instagram or something like that, but. We'll get you more information on that, but I just wanted to shout that out because it, it should be a good look out there. Some some brunch, some light bites, some mimosas, DJ, all that kind of stuff on Sunday at, I believe, 1 or 3 p.m. But like I said, it'll be in the description, so I just wanted to give that shout out before we got out of here. Um, how about 